Hey, you guys, this one is an absolute wild, bizarre doozy today. If you don't know who I am, I'm Suzanne Tukumari. It's right for Patheos, a place called No Longer Quivering. I wrote about the quiverful evangelical movement, and it has been a wild ride over 10 years. And I'm currently working on a book. Well, I'm actually working on several at the same time simultaneously. I'm trying to finish up one write chapters for another, and uh, write notes for what I'm thinking about. So I've got a lot going on right now involving this particular branch of religion that I used to be a part of. I used to be a good quiverful mama. Now, I was the dropout because I was only able to have a handful of children instead of enough to staff a basketball team. And I'm really okay with that now after many years of not being okay with it and feeling the pressure and the guilt and all of that. So this has kind of been my jam. I want to see everybody involved in this thing come out whole and healthy and everything else. Yvonne, you made it here. Yeah. Moochild Peak. Hey. So... Don't harass this woman that I'm going to speak about today because this has to do with the Amazon Prime documentary series, the limited documentary series, Happy Shiny People. Now, like all of you, I, well, like many of you, I watched this thing. Hey, Autistic Shill. I watched this thing when it first came out, kind of like this, through horror struck eyes because. I knew some of the people involved. I knew of most of the people involved. And um, I knew what it was going to be like. I knew it was going to be hard to watch. It was going to be very triggering. And sure enough, it was. Hey, Melly Lynn. Um, so it was super triggering to see this stupid thing. And recently I went back and rewatched it where I had a little space from it. And I was not quite so triggered left, right, and center. And all I could do was watch this thing and pray that all of those people got the kind of closure they needed. Because it's really bad if you're coming out of this crap and you're dealing, just dealing left, right, and center with this. And your own religion is treating you like garbage and they're trying to pretend like this doesn't matter, like you don't matter, like none of this is real. And what was really horrific for me about the um, whole thing with Gothard was, while I was not IBF, uh, IBLP, or ATI, I was not related to any of that, I sure enough knew a bunch of people who were at my own church. It was something, hey, Christine, that we were all involved with in some way, whether accidental next door or whatever. So, so I knew quite a bit about it. It just wasn't my jam, you know. So last night, minding my own business. And yes, I'd heard there was a pushback documentary. I heard there was a documentary centered around Bill Gothard, Bill Gothard supporting that was outcoming, that was coming out. And I was like, Oh, really? What is that going to look like? You know, because that's clearly not at all what any of us really need, because we all know what Bill Gothard is. And I knew many of the young ladies that had filed against him. So i heard of this thing, but I've not seen it until last night. I saw it last night. There is a lady who calls herself, hang on to your underwear for this one. Hang on tight. Everybody got their granny panties in a bunch and grab. Mommy questions lady. I have never heard such a ridiculous username in my life. So this mommy questions lady has a website where she teaches blanket training, among other methods. And we know about blanket training because of Yes, yeah, she goes by that name because of Gothard and some of the people that practice this that are related to him. One of the videos I did that I get the most traction on and the most detractors is the one where I showed 
how if you use blanket training like Michael Pearl explains it from the time the child's two months old, what that looks like to a small baby laying there, having a parent beating the floor around them with with a. But she has something a little bit different. She calls cover the mouth, cover the mouth, cover the mouth of your child. So this lady has had nine children. Okay. And so I was thinking, oh, she must be part of IBLP, use the ATI wisdom booklets. She's related somehow. But when these videos popped up for me yesterday, I was like, what the hell? <laughs> and I started deep in, <sighs> it's beyond bad autistic. Um, it is, it's beyond bad because she has done, she has gone and filmed and talked to all these people. And tried to take apart the testimony of people I know that have lived through this, because the Shiny Happy People series it didn't funk, it didn't focus on any of those old timers who were parents back then. It focused on the second gen, which it well should have, because they are the ones that are the most harmed by the way these people raised them. I'm lucky I didn't fall into any of that when I was raising my children, but I still have had to apologize to them, each one of them separately, for things that I did fall into during our years in Hunty Town. We were living, we were living there, we were living there in Taco Church land with, you know, totalitarian, authoritative church organizations, high demand religious organizations. We live that crap. The marketing the blanket dream video was frightening, so I hate to think about a poor baby. Number one fan, it was horrible to make. My family can tell I was freaked out. I did it because my good friend, Cindy Kunzman, who's a very nice person and very balanced, she was the one you have to show what this actually is. And I thought about it, and I couldn't do the video the way she wanted with a baby doll. I just could not do it. My mama heart would not let me. I could not. It was bad enough that I was doing it with a pillow and pretending that was a baby. I watched some of the Bates kids on YouTube. I don't get the impression any of them follow the Gothard teachings. Christine, most of them don't. Because you know Gothard would be super horrified by the super worldly way that some of those girls are. And... I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. You you do you, boo. That's what I've always said since leaving this, these things. Whatever works for you that's legal, go for it. But if you're harming somebody, that's clearly not right. And they're not harming anybody with the way they're living. So I have nothing against those poor Bates kids. They really went through it living in a the insecurity, not having the greatest home life as far as like a place to live and things. But they're all adults now. They're able to do whatever they want. So this woman, her name is Kelly McLean. She interviewed Bill Gothard, did a big interview with him. She has had a ton of videos she's put out taking apart the women who accuse Bill Gothard, which is sad because one of the ones she's going after, somebody I know pretty well from my part of the world. And I'm just really defaming the hell out of anybody who spoke on that documentary. And like I've said before, they're good there were good and bad people on the documentary. All of them had stories. Most of them I liked. There was a handful I was kind of like, uh, I don't like to see them get any attention. Unfortunately, Bill and I went to a church like this once. The assistant pastor's wife tried to tell me how to parent my kids. We left the church. That's smart. I wasn't smart enough to do that. Uh, various people told me to beat my children. I think I, the worst example I give it every now and then is my daughter had a bleeding disorder at four. And at four years old, she went through so much trauma. Going back and forth to the hospital because she had this bleeding disorder. They treated it with blood products and she contracted meningitis in the blood products. So we came close to losing her a couple of times and her platelet levels, we lived and died by them and they were not always good. It took a long time to straighten her out where she had normal platelet levels. 
So her and I were like fossil buddies. We'd been so traumatized by everything we'd been through. They were kind of like this with each other all the time. We were just linked. And she was hugging on me. I was hugging on her. And I had people at the old church that said, that is wrong. That is clingy. That is selfishness. That is this, that, and the other. You got to beat that child. And I was like, hell no. My child is a completely disorder. Even if she does do something I consider acting up, and I don't consider that acting up, I'm not going to lay a hand on her. So that kind of got me off to a bad start with the IBLP, ATI people at our old church. And so here is the shocker, okay? I got to throw the shocker out here about this documentary. This woman who is currently kissing Bill Gothard's rear end like it's made out of gold and chocolate. So you would think she's IBLP, right? She's used the ATI wisdom booklets with those nine children of hers. No such thing. This woman is da, 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 Mormon. I couldn't believe it. A Mormon. A very fundamentalist Mormon. A conservative Mormon, but a Mormon. No skin in this game at all inserted herself to do this quote documentary with a small document, a small uh, production company out of Utah. No, I'm not a fan of Mormonism for so many things, mostly because of the million trillion rules and the oppressive nature of everything that doesn't take into account how people can all be different and have different talents and strengths. It's a one size fits all approach. And that always pisses me off. She wanted me to beat my kids with a switch for things like too shy to say hello to strangers. Say hello to Mr. Lee and you get the switch kind of stuff. I was mortified. That was the kind of stuff they were telling me I needed to beat my kids for. I had one child that was very shy. I had my daughter who was, like I said, her and I were Fox Soul buddies. We were like clinging on each other for a long time. And I think our relationship, her and I is different than my relationship with my son or my other daughter. And that's just, I think, a function of what we went through together. It doesn't mean I love the other two any less because, no, obviously I don't. I love all, I love all three of these, my kids, my adult kids. My adult daughter, my oldest daughter my adult son, and my daughter, who is an adult, who's the youngest of my baby. After Ruby Frank, I'm definitely not a fan of Mormons. Christine, I think that was a wake-up call for a lot of people. Um, Von, she is fine now. She takes care of what she needs to do. In fact, I found out some really crazy stuff when my one other daughter did a uh, one of these detailed DNA maps, not one that's just like, oh, you came from Europe, but one that talks about the medical issues and certain bloodlines because she has had her struggle, was finally diagnosed with something that's an immune system disorder. My youngest has an immune system disorder. I have one. So clearly something is wrong in our DNA code. But like I said, that was the big thing. Beat your kids. So this woman is the Ruby Frank kind of um, Mormon. She believes in beating the children. She believes in all of that. And it's kind of disconcerting to see her doing the Gothard thing because do you guys know what Gothard has said about Mormons, about the LDS people? And I mean, across the board, LDS, regular LDS, the two or three different conservative LDS groups. Well, she's a member of one of those, apparently. And the fundamentalist LDS, he has said a ton of stuff about them going to hell and being demonic and all this stuff. Bill Gothard has really put them down, really pounded on them. Hard, like so many other groups that I know um, from my old time in my old church. I actually at one point had a book on how to argue with Mormons because they send their little guys door to door. I lived in a nice neighborhood. They would go to door to door in our neighborhood every now and then, and they would hit us. 
And sometimes it would spin into crazy when I said no. Like um, one time I was wallpapering and they knocked on the door and I said, and I'm in overalls, I'm covered with wallpaper paste. I said, I don't have time for this, maybe later. But I don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit, so I'm not going to argue with you guys. And the second I said that, I said, well, you don't care about your children's future. Obviously, you don't care if they go to heaven or hell. And I turned around and let that guy have it. Okay, full, both barrels. So. Uh, these type of I always call them fundagelical because they have part of fundamentalism part of evangelicalism and then they are the high demand religious organization stuff without any kind of do, any kind of denomination behind them they're pulling this crap so to have a Mormon doubling down on it is just bizarre and I find her whole appearance and her videos to be just utterly bizarre i went in and took a look at her website last night her website is you know obviously mommy what was it? mommy answers mommy answers of mommy questions i said mommy questions but let me look because i was on there last night late um mommy answer lady not mommy questions mommy answer lady she has got this large website and i can't blame her she has a book to push called how to train your child to behave by holly mclean she guarantees build a relationship of trust stop tantrums whining and fussing and crying for good establish bedtime time routines and end battles teach appropriate social skills we all know what that means that means Beat your child if they refuse to say hello to a stranger. Take charge with mature parenting. Give appropriate rewards and consequences and so much more. Now, I am a big believer in giving rewards and consequences for actions. But that it came from the fact that I raised my kids with love and logic more than this nonsense. So, Holly... Is shopping her documentary right now and has put a bunch of trailers for her documentary up online. She keeps making videos defending the Duggars, defending the Duggars' use of the rod, defending blanket training, which she herself teaches. Last night, I did see a really good doc, not documentary, a really good podcast where the guy took apart. Holly's claims and everything with much more information than I'm going to have to be able to give you here. And I have that linked in the description here. So I would recommend if you want to see what Holly is like to go there to see what the mommy answers lady is like, because he's got clips of her and I don't recommend going and looking at her stuff because she's trying to be the YouTube sensation. And here's the other thing that's interesting to me about the whole thing. And I, that they didn't hit upon, but I noticed last night, and I wanted to say today, most of the time, Mormon consequences are abuse. I know that, especially the fundamentalist Mormons were when you reach about 14 and you're too much of a threat to the grown men who are trying to marry up all the young girls, they just dump them. It is. It's very abusive what goes on in some of these groups. And for her to be teaching this abuse just boggles my mind. But here's the thing I wanted to say. Looking at the trailer of this thing, and I encourage you to look at the trailer, you can tell she is inserting herself directly. It's about her and her reactions to everything and all of that. When I saw her videos with her perfect influencer wall behind her with all her little ch tchotchkes and things, it was like, I know what this is. We saw this when um, Shiny Happy People came out, and people none of us had ever heard of before came out of the woodworks to join in, to pile on, to try and get all the attention on themselves they could. And I'm not even talking about trauma dumping here. I'm talking about just running around trying to get people to talk to them and take over groups and all sorts of things. We saw that. We saw so many newbies arrive, and it was like, okay, I'm here now. I'm going to be your new social media guru because I live this. 
there's something about this documentary series that is bringing out the grifters. So my suggestion is looking at her coverage of this thing and the way she's making herself the main character of the rebuttal, which should not be the rebuttal, if you're going to do a rebuttal, should focus on Gothard and the people around him that still support him, not the person making the documentary. The people who made shiny, happy people did not insert themselves. And that's what a true documentarian will do. They will go ahead and give you all of the info, but they won't be seen on screen. They may, you may hear their voice asking the questions, but that is it. That is it, that is it, that is it. And when they do documentaries, they talk to so many people, it's ridiculous. Like I said, I've been filled five or six times. I've ended up on the cutting floor because obviously I wasn't a good fit. I wasn't a good fit for that. I wasn't a good fit for the Gwen Shamblin thing, even though I knew Gwen. Um, so having gotten out of these things, there's not been anything so far that shows the point of the parents. The only closest I've seen to that was when shiny, happy people use Jim Holt and his wife, Bobby. Okay. And they used him because they were close to the Duggars. That was it. They were at Duggar. We all know YouTubers that make it all about. I know that, Christine. And that it's a temptation. I have to fight it myself, I, especially in the wake of my husband's cancer thing, because, um, oh, thank you. I don't know how kind-hearted I am, because I was looking at this woman last night going, oh, no, because the woman that we may not name also came out of the Shiny Happy People documentary spear and inserted herself and made herself the main character. So if you make yourself the main character, something ain't right there, and I would suggest therapy. Lots of great therapists out there. There's no reason to stay stuck in your dysfunction. And there you go. So that's pretty much everything I want to talk about this morning. So this woman is just another dumb influencer. And it's kind of funny because we're having a conversation right now on the, one of the Reddit travel boards about digital nomads. And they're kind of, they're influencers. And they've kind of ruined Travel in certain areas. They've ruined travel here. They've certainly made the prices on rentals go sky high in Tamarindo. And I don't know if we need any more people making videos at Tamarindo Beach talking about how awesome it is. But that's another thing. But that's they're very similar to how this woman is presenting herself. And like so many others that we know of have presented themselves and made themselves the main character in everything they're covering. No, you're not the main character. You need to step back and let the people who actually suffered the abuse and those they accused, let them have their say if you feel like the other side has not been fairly represented. I know that Bill Gothard did not respond, and he does not respond to being interviewed for that crap and, and at all. Being kind-hearted doesn't mean you can't spot yeah, I spot weirdos all the time, and sometimes I get fooled. Like I said, this week I got fooled like two or three times by people, and it wasn't pleasant. It was a hard feeling, and I hate putting boundaries and barriers in place, but quite frankly, I've had to in my lifetime because of, you know, we're only on this earth a limited amount of time. You don't want to waste it with stupid things. You just don't. Find your passion and stick to it. That's the best thing I can tell you. And this weird thing seems to be my passion, talking about these people, these types of churches especially. What can happen to you if you don't heed the warnings and you end up in a plus side Gothards? I can't tell you the women I've seen crushed under the load. So many of them, even the ones that were still there, having breakdowns and going away for a while and then coming back and coming back into it after a little while away and psychiatric drugs. Not that there's anything wrong with taking psych psychiatric drugs because clearly they're needed sometimes. But it's a pattern. And I keep saying I'm going to do a review of Shannon Harris's book. Um, I guess dating up. Uh, she was married to Josh. 
guy wrote, I Kissed Dating Goodbye. Her book is called The Woman They Wanted. And there were a lot of parallels for me with my own journey in some ways, because we both came to religion later. We both weren't virgins. We weren't tattoo debt-free virgins like uh, Gloria Alexander pushes. And she had the predictable crash that all of us have when we just burn out. I was lucky. My crash was minor compared to many, but it did happen. And it's just such a hard way to live. I don't know if you guys have seen the Barbie movie, but the American Ferrera speech where she talks about women said all the pressure they're under, you got to be beautiful, got to be pretty, but you can't be too pretty because you might provoke the jealousy of other girls. You might make men think you're sleazy. I mean, take that and amplify it. That is what women in these types of religions end up as. They end up with the worst cognitive dissonance of all time. And that would be tragic. Okay, you guys, I've been rambling too long. I should need to go. Um, Y'all have a wonderful Saturday. I'm happy as a clam because I managed to get the house back on the right track after going to and from the hospital so many times with that one out there and his um, post-surgical hijinks. And, um, yeah, so I'm happy. The house is starting to finally feel like my house and my routines again. Love you guys.